May the sound of the bell remind us that the Spirit of God is within us and among us. As followers of Jesus Christ, our mission at St. Peter's United Church in Sudbury is to worship God, nurture faith, to foster a caring, inclusive, and affirming church family, to serve our community, to work for peace and justice, and to respect the earth. Before we gathered here for worship, the life and spirituality of the Atekmekshing and Anishinaabeg preceded us. We worship on their traditional territory with gratitude, and we will seek to walk in faithfulness and reconciliation. Each day is a gift from God. Each moment is that opportunity to reach out in service to all creation. Each day is a reminder of the new covenant. Not written on stone tablets, easily broken, but inscribed on our hearts, filled with joy and hope. Each day we draw closer to God, who has forgotten more than we ever learn, who has forgiven us more than we ever acknowledge. O God of our hearts, you yearn to be close to us, that we can know you in every breath, in every hope, in every relationship. Meet us here today and teach us to recognize the covenant of justice peace and love you have written on our hearts. So may our desires become your desires, our work become your work, and our community the place where you are sought and found. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Chad Teller here. I am the chair of your transition team here at St. Peter's United in Sudbury, Ontario, and this is your transition minute. I wanted to say thank you for everyone, uh, to everyone for participating with us during this transition time through small groups, conversations. Um, we appreciate your feedback. We appreciate your participation. Please continue uh, with us on this journey. I wanted to remind everyone of our Zoom, of our weekly Zoom chats on Wednesday from 10.30 to 11.30 every week. Those will continue for the next few months. And during those times, they're kind of like a drop-in, kind of come when you can uh, sessions where we'll have some discussion, we'll have some topics to go over. You can come with your questions, share your heart with us as the transition team. And these, uh, the link for these will be in the description below as well as uh, in On The Rock. So please look for that. And also a reminder that we are we are starting to use our internet story timeline platform called Padlet. 
Uh, that's where we're going to share our St. Peter's stories with each other. And please, uh, when you're sharing your stories, uh, we would like the posts to be about um, kind of major significant uh, times in your journey at St. Peter's um, or significant things that happen uh, at St. Peter's or uh, the St. Peter's journey itself. Okay. And then also we wanted to make sure that during this, uh, this time that we're keeping the congregation, keeping those uh, in our community, um, dealing with illnesses or sicknesses, um, that we're keeping those people in our prayers and praying for them during these trying times. So thank you for uh, hearing us, for listening. And if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to us uh, at our email. Again, transition team at stpetersunited.ca. And have a wonderful day. We'll see you next week for our Transition Minute. Hello, St. Peter's friends, and welcome to the first days of spring. Spring officially started this year on March the 20th. And isn't it great to see the days getting longer and warmer and the snow starting to melt? It's at this time of year that we start to look for the first robin or the first green shoots coming up in the garden. Maybe the tulips or the daffodils that we planted last fall. And the gardeners among us will be starting to get ready and plan for what they're going to plant in their garden this year. What seeds they will plant. I've been thinking about my pumpkin seeds. Last October, before I turned our pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns, I scooped out some seeds and I dried them and kept them in a cool, dark place all winter. And now it's time to, to start planting them. I like to start them early in a pot indoors so that when I put them outside, they're right ready to go. So into the ground it goes, and with a little water and some sunshine, hopefully I'll get some pumpkin plants. But what would happen if I didn't plant the pumpkin seed? What would happen to the pumpkin seed? Not very much, I guess. It would still be a pumpkin seed. In our Bible reading this morning, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's talking to, telling them about a grain or a seed of wheat. He tells them that the seed of wheat can't become what it's supposed to be or what it's supposed to do, which is to grow into a plant, unless it stops being a grain of wheat. Jesus says that it is like the grain of wheat has died. Now, that's kind of sad that the grain of wheat has to die, but living as a big green plant is far better than living as just a seed. The plant can, do th plant can do things that the seed can't, like provide shade and shelter and grow more seeds, which in turn can grow into more plants, which can grow more seeds. The reason that Jesus is talking to his disciples about the seed going into the ground and dying so that it can become a plant is that Jesus knows that he will soon stop being Jesus in the way that the disciples know him at that time. Jesus knows that for him, after the events of Good Friday and Easter Sunday, things are going to be different. Jesus wants to, his disciples to think about his life, death, and resurrection as a plant that keeps growing and has new seeds which is what his disciples will become. If they follow Jesus and his teachings, they too can become seeds that grow into a part of his new life. Seeds that will share God's love and healing with others. And if we follow Jesus and his teachings, we too can grow into a new and better life with Jesus that we can then share with others. And that's pretty good news. Will you say a repeat after me prayer with me? I will say the words and you can repeat them after. Let's pray. Dear God, 
Thank you for Jesus, who shows us how to grow in you. Thank you and amen. Thanks, St. Peter's friends, for sharing this time with me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Our first scripture reading is responsive based on Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. Please join me in your responses printed at the bottom of your screen. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt, the covenant which they broke, even though I loved them. Come, Holy Spirit, do a new work among us. But this is the new covenant that I will make with my people on this day, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them. I will write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Come, Holy Spirit, write your truth within us. Claim us as your own. Show us what it means to follow you, to be your people in the world. No longer will they need to teach their neighbors or their relatives, saying, You should know the Lord, for everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already. Come, Holy Spirit, renew our hearts and minds. Fill us with your love and compassion so that our lives may make you known throughout our hurting, hungry world. Amen. Our second scripture reading is from John chapter 2, verses 20 to 33. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Lord, will honor. Jesus speaks about his death. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Herein lies the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining us uh, as part of this worship service presented by the Transition Team. My name is Joe Ramsey, and I've been acting as a uh, congregational consultant for the Transition Team over this well, it's uh, been several months now that we've been working together. And uh, as we consider this passage that we read from the Gospel of John earlier, uh, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. Uh, we're, we're, we're going to have a conversation with three of the members of the transition team uh, s inspired by that passage of, of how death can lead to new life how the giving up of one's life can create life, how letting go can often lead to new opportunities, and how, how uh, respecting and honoring the past that formed us um, can often inspire us to move forward into the future that lies ahead. 
And so we've got, uh, we've got three questions that I'm going to pose to each member of the transition team this morning and uh, let you hear their thoughts inspired by this passage of scripture, but also inspired by their love for this congregation and their engagement in the life and work and ministry of this congregation over, in some cases, many years. So we're going to start with, uh, with Julie Baer. And uh, the first question I want to ask you, Julie, is um, when you think about the life challenges of this past year, what's something about St. Peter's that, for which you feel particularly grateful? Well, Joe, for me, it's been the opportunity to be able to connect with friends in a way that I hadn't been able to uh, before and gain deeper relationships. And I guess what I mean by that is um, on the obvious through, you know, through virtual means, but just more opportunities. Um, I'm seeing people from St. Peter's, from my St. Peter's family much more than um, I would have seen pre-COVID. And uh, I really welcome those experiences because each and every time I get to connect with people, and sometimes it's on a daily basis with some people, I get to know a little bit more about them, um, how they're doing, and also how we work together on things to to continue to allow St. Peter's to keep operating and just to continue to do the work that we were doing as members of the congregation. And Judy, for you, when you think about the life challenges of this past year, what, what's something about St. Peter's for which you feel grateful and gratitude? Probably the similar as Julie, but for me, it's the sense of community. Um, when the pandemic first started, I, I had a hard time for the first couple of months. I'm a pretty social person. I like to be and actually need to be out visiting with people and interacting with people. And to be told I had to stay home was pretty difficult for me. And so the sense of community that was there, the telephone calls that I made, but also that I received, and especially from those who knew that I was having a difficult time, was just very supportive. Um, we don't have family who live here. And so St. Peter's is really my family and has been my family even more so in this past year. And Chad, I know that when you began working as the uh, chair of this transition team, you envisioned something very different uh, before we found ourselves in the midst of a pandemic. So given, given the challenges, though, of this past year, what are you feeling particularly grateful for when you think about St. Peter's as a congregation? Yeah, I'm very thankful for uh, the care that the congregation has shown not for only each other, but to the local community, um, continuing to minister to the community in different ways. Uh, the other thing that I've uh, been grateful for is uh, the the committees and the trans. Everyone on the transition time, uh, Joe, for you, different leadership um, stepping in to meet the needs uh, where they where they are. Um, very grateful that that we've maintained, uh, not just maintained, but uh, are thriving in the online services and allowing people to experience that worship together. Thanks to all three of you for those responses. I'm gonna move on to another question. My, my next question for you is, when you think about this past year, what have you learned are some things that you could let go of. Start with you again, Julie. I think for me, um, in a in a sort of a macro way, it would be that things have to be done the same way. Um, activities have to occur at the same time. The same people need to be involved. And I'm learning that we have a congregation of individuals who have talents. 
I don't, I didn't even know existed. Um, I think for me though, on a, on a micro level, and this might seem surprising given my first response, which was talking about the people and having that opportunity. For me, it's recognizing that I could let go of physically coming to church every week. And not that I'm saying that, you know, I would completely want to go to a virtual service every week, but I do find and I have found that. Um, I'd like options and uh, I like the idea that, you know, there could be something else for me rather than just, you know, having to physically um, attend a, a service every week. So many people have been uh, discovering uh, you know, something about the spirit the expectations around space and place, you know, as we've been displaced and, uh, and uh, not allowed to be in spaces that are familiar. And uh, so yeah, I've heard others say that sort of thing too. But for you, uh, Judy, uh, same question. When you think about this past year, uh, what have you learned are things that you could let go of? Well, again, I'm probably pretty similar to Julie. Um, I could let go of the sameness. It's it's interesting because I never used to think it was all the same, but I, I see that more now. Um, the part that I think would be, that will be nice to be able to let go of is the, the structures that we have, the way we do our meetings, how nice that now we can stay at home and have a meeting at home. Um, and so I, I think I would really enjoy that part on a more regular basis. Maybe the structure will look a little different. Maybe we'll meet a little differently. So that would be certainly something that would be great. I also hope that we continue to do the, the streaming, or no, not the streaming, the YouTubes, but also do some streamings because I too like to be at home. It's nice to have the space around to watch a church service when I'm ready to watch a church service. And so sometimes that isn't always on a Sunday morning. Sometimes that's on a Thursday evening or even a Sunday evening. And I'm also thinking how nice it'll be if we're away and then can come home and watch a church service or watch the church service while we're away. So just letting go of the sameness for me will be, will be a welcome change. It's challenged us to, uh, to think about the ruts that we have just accepted uh, that our wheels need to travel in, you know, I think in this pandemic. So for you, Chad, um, same question. When you think about this past year, what are, what are some things that you've learned you could let go of? I think for me, the biggest thing uh, is learning to let go of expectations. Uh, when you sign up for certain things or uh, things with my own family or job uh having those expectations where you think it's going to go this way and then it doesn't not not only it doesn't go that way but it goes a way that you never thought it could go yeah. and being okay with that and so i think expectations across the board learning to let go of those expectations and allow the journey uh to be a little freer and uh to take the path that it's going to take and to be okay with that has been a, a big thing um, that I've had to learn to let go of in many areas. I once heard someone say that if you want to really make God laugh, just tell God that you have a plan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so now to our, our final question. Um, we've talked about um, this past year with two questions and uh, it's time to think into the future. So this last question, uh, starting again with you, Julie, is uh, what do you see emerging for the congregation over the year that's ahead? What do you see emerging? I think people are going to, to listen to those inner voices and they're going to be brave and they're going to speak up and they're going to say, could we try this? Or I have an idea, or I've been thinking about this, or, you know, 
I'm wondering about this being on this committee. Is it is it right for me? And I'm hoping that as these ideas come forth, that we can accept them as something new, something to be investigated, um, something to be considered. And a word I've thought a lot of lately that I haven't um, ever, I, I've learned in my church experience, I perhaps should have done more of this, is discernment. And, you know, Joe, to me, discernment is sort of like that word north, narthex. You think of it as a church word, but you don't really understand what it means. And a number of weeks ago, one of the ministers on our, our service she said, it's the thoughtful consideration through the lens of God's love. And I have realized in my church experience that I have not always used discernment. And what I'm hoping is that as we move forward with ideas, and we have a wonderful congregation of people, and I know that there's going to be ideas that people have. I know that there's going to be groups that people want to join and I would just hope that people would use discernment and in that process that they find the areas that they want to become involved with and we look at doing things not completely eliminating the way things were done because there wasn't terrible ways that about things things that the way they were done but it's more about looking at the opportunities that we have to address um, some some ways that we could be doing things better. Thanks. Uh, and, and Judy, for you, uh, what do you see emerging for the congregation over the coming year? Uh, I believe in openness for change. That's certainly what I'm hoping for. I think that having already started some of the small groups and learning that there's so many more talents out there than most of us ever realized, that new leadership will come forward, that we will handle functions quite differently, that we will do things in a different way, but in a way that will make us feel very much connected in community, very much connected in what our mission is and where we want to go. Uh, I think that it'll be really important for us to try new things, to be open to whatever happens with folks. It might be something with children. I said, I would love to see a church service where we sat around in tables and had discussions with each other, almost like a Bible study, but maybe not that way. Or the other thought was, wouldn't it be interesting to be able to go downtown to Memorial Park and have a church service there some Sunday morning? So just for all of us to be open for change, whatever that change will look like, and for all of us to be open to take on some kind of a leadership role in whatever way that might be. Thank you. And then finally to you, Chad, what, uh, what do you see emerging for this congregation over the year ahead? Um, I completely agree with uh, Julie and Judy, and uh, I don't know what else I could add to that because uh, I agree, and that's kind of what was on my on my mind as well. Allowing, um, I think, emerging will be clarity. Uh, there'll be a lot more uh, times uh, to to hash things out, to to take the time to say, okay, why are we doing this? Where is this coming from? Um, is this what we want to continue? Do we want to change it? Um, do we want to add to it? Uh, I think they'll be emerging, um, uh, agreed with them, uh, congregational participation in new ways as well. Um, and then also figuring out how to uh, be united as a congregation in new ways. Again, whether that be, like Judy said, a, a service out outdoors when um, as restrictions are lifted and we can do those things. Uh, that we do them, right? Uh, as opportunities come up to do new things, that we take advantage of those things, of those times. Well, thank you to all three of you. I'm, uh, I'm hoping, uh, looking ahead, um, that I'll actually get to come and meet you 
people personally and in person and spend maybe an afternoon with the congregation in a, in a workshop thinking about the mission and ministry of the congregation and joining you for a worship service and being physically not distanced from St. Peter's United Church. I'm scheduled to get my uh, vaccine on Thursday coming up. Oh. So, uh, so, so things are looking, things are looking hopeful and uh, I just okay. might actually make it to Sudbury sometime before this okay. work of transmission is finished. Wonderful. That would be great for me. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you to this congregation for it's uh, courage to uh, engage in a process of intentional transitioning as uh, you deal with not only the changes that were planned, but the ones that were have been unplanned because of the pandemic and other things that have happened. So uh, I'd like to just uh, close this time uh, in a prayer uh, on, on all of our behalf. So let us pray. We thank you, God, for this congregation St. Peter's United Church, and for the for the love and the friendships that are shared, but also for the vision and the mission and the ministry in which uh, this congregation engages together and with one another. And we pray for your blessing upon this congregation in its mission and ministry in this in these days that are immediately before us and also in the years that are to come. We ask this in the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. During the World Water Day, we held a ceremony and um, some of the interns attended this ceremony. I was one of the interns and we were sitting in the, the ceremony circle and they had the women pray for the water. During our time there, all of us were on edge because we were kind of bummed out with the news that our funding wasn't going to be extended. So we're at the ceremony and all of a sudden I get an email from John, the CEO of Water First, and he's telling us that he got the funding and the, the internship is going to be extended. And I just thought it was really powerful when we were all in the ceremony and the women were praying for the water and the interns who, who were part of the internship and they got up and prayed for the water, I felt like they solidified their passion and love for the water, which made the internship continue on till its planned ending. During these COVID times, the doors of St. Peter's remain closed, but the work of the church continues. We worship together virtually, and our outreach continues in the community. Jesus reminds us that a seed surrenders its life to the ground in order to bear much fruit. What we surrender to God in our offering will also bear much fruit in the world. As springtime begins, we sow the seeds of God's love as we offer our gifts to God. Let us pray. God of growth and new life, with our gifts, we offer you our thanks and praise for the promise of spring and the promise of resurrection in Jesus Christ. Bless our gifts and through them accomplish more than we can ask or imagine as they bear fruit in the world you love. Amen.
Let us pray. Creating God, loving sun, guiding spirit, with springtime sun and the promise of new life, you wake us as seeds from our slumbers. And we praise you for you have been faithful to us through every season of the year. We are grateful for your patience, your persistence in drawing near to us, even though the times when we cannot draw near to each other. God, we confess that our that we love our lives as they are at times and and sometimes we struggle with even the idea of change. We wrestle with the thought of doing things differently. But we know that the life we cling to is only a half life. Thank you, O oh God. And only you only you can give us true life in full. Forgive us for holding on to wrong things. Teach us by your spirit to let go of our agendas, our assumptions, our expectations. Help us to let go of our self-righteousness and our false notions of power. Give us the strength to try new things. Encourage us and even push us to let go of ourselves so we can fully embrace you. Loving God, in this time of uncertainty, there is much to be anxious about. Hmm. And as we pray for the world you love, we have lit this candle to remember the people we pray for. Send your healing spirit to guide our countries and communities as they respond to COVID-19. Bless the work of the medical researchers, the frontline healthcare workers, all those that are helping everyone in this time. Bless the plans to offer vaccines to all who want it and to give us patience as we wait for our turn for the vaccinations. And we remember before you, those whose lives have been broken by disasters, by fear, illness or pain and we ask that you send your healing spirit to restore them and we especially pray for Miranda and Chester God we lift up Linda to you we pray for Elise pray for Pat pray for Anne pray for Elsie and God, we bring before you Jean, 
and Dawn and her family. And we'd also lift up the Johnston family and all those in need. God, we do thank you for the signs of spring that are here and the warm weather that, that we're experiencing. And we remember before you, God, in prayer, all those who have no one to pray for them. God of healing, gently touch their lives with your spirit. Bring warmth and comfort to them. Life and wholeness into their lives and souls. We pray for the ministry of the church in our city and around the world. As we prepare to celebrate Easter and the resurrection, help us plan safely and creatively. Send your healing spirit to raise our hearts and hopes. And we pray through Jesus Christ, who first taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. To serve Christ and follow Him. Let your old life fall like a grain of wheat into the earth, so that you may bear much fruit as you allow God to reshape your heart and live in obedience to the law written within you. And may God center you in truth and steady your spirit. May Christ renew your joy and strengthen your will. 
And may the Spirit teach you God's hidden wisdom and fill you with songs of rejoicing. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.